This is where Greyhound Bus 1170 came to a sudden stop 10 years ago. A man then known as Vince Lee was attacking his seatmate, Timothy McLean, stabbing, decapitating, cannibalizing. It took five hours for police to arrest him. This woman was on the bus. She still can't get the sound of screaming out of her head. I thought it was just one of those scary movies. <laughs> we can't identify her or her daughter under child welfare laws. Two and a half years ago, <laughs> social workers apprehended her baby. They said her PTSD made her an unfit mother. I'm constantly waking up depressed and not getting the proper help. Cook your food. The little girl lived in a foster home until a year ago when the court granted her grandmother guardianship and gave her mother access. She is a phenomenal joy. She's, she mesmerizes everybody that comes in contact with her by her little voice and everything. She just, she's loved by everybody. Carol Dedelli says her son's death left a big hole in her life, but now she also sees some hope. And it took a long time to really want to get up every day. And I was given a few reasons to feel that way, to want to get up. One of those reasons, a grandson. Five months after Timothy McLean's death, his son was born. I was in shock and then scared and then excited and then really worried. The mother was young, struggling to care for two other children by a different father. In 2016, a judge gave Dedelli permanent guardianship. He is a gift, a gift from God sent by my son to give me a reason to get up every day and to take care of. And um, I'm doing that to the best of my ability. She's still concerned about the family dynamics, so for now, doesn't want the boy's mother or her ex-husband visiting him unsupervised. I'm okay looking through these. It's sad that we don't have any recent pictures of him. But for now, these will have to do. It means these pictures are all Tim McLean Sr. has of his son and his grandson. Like his father, that's what we're left with his memories. Still struggling to cope with the loss, he visits his son's gravesite every week. I sit and I talk with him. Talk I tell him everything. I just joke around about my day and how much we miss him and how sad it makes me. Shortly after the attack, McLean Sr. launched a lawsuit against Greyhound. Ten years later, it's at an impasse. We don't believe the settlement that they offered for our grandson is at all reasonable. But for today, both parents want the focus to be on their son. He was just vibrant energy, and I so miss that in my world. He always lived his life the way he wanted to. We're trying to move on, but it's very hard. And I don't think, I don't think we'll ever be over it. What's clear in the decades since the attack is that Timothy McLean wasn't the only victim. Many lives were torn apart. Karen Pauls, CBC News, near Portage La Prairie, Manitoba. Vince Lee has also lived a decade under the shadow of his own violent acts. Barely seven months after he killed Timothy McLean, a judge ruled that he was not criminally responsible. The correct conclusion was reached. Mr. Lee is a schizophrenic. Mr. Lee had a severe mental disease. He still did it. Whether he was in his right frame of mind or not, he still did the act. Somebody, there was nobody else on that bus holding a knife. Lee remained in a mental facility in Selkirk, but in 2012, he was allowed to go out if he was accompanied. By 2014, that was no longer required, and by 2015, he could visit Winnipeg and apply to live in a group home. Last year, he was granted an absolute discharge by the Manitoba Criminal Code Review Board. He no longer requires supervision, and he goes by a new name, Will Baker.